Welcome back to my iPad review series. In this video, I'm going to cover Safari, Mail, App Store, and, whoops, wrong page, iBooks. Okay, so let's start off by showing Safari. And right off the bat, I know I'm going to get some people saying, but David, it doesn't have Flash. This thing sucks. You know what, guys? I have run into a couple websites that don't have Flash, but honestly, it has not really hindered my experience. And if I really do want Flash video, there are apps to cover for that. For instance, ABC Player, let me just show this real quick, has all of their current shows streaming for free on here without the use of Flash. For instance, Lost. That's amazing. Anyway, that's another app I'll definitely be talking about. So I just wanted to get that out of the way real quick. All right, so going back into Safari, you, you may notice that this looks kind of like the iPhone version, which is pretty much to be expected. However, it looks a lot more like the desktop version now. You actually have a bookmarks bar up here. I don't know if you can see that. It might get a little blurry, but there's my bookmarks bar. I simply touch my bookmark folder, and I can go to my desired bookmark. Twitter, blogs, touch that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the camera. There you go, blogs, and if I want to go to Facebook and all that good stuff. So let me put this back down. So basically, as you can probably tell, it looks a lot more like a desktop version. Up here, we have back buttons. Um, here's the tab view. So if I wanted to create a new page, the tab view looks a lot cooler than it did on the iPhone because, again, of the large screen. We um, can see so much more. So let me go to Daily Booth. By the way, add me if you're interested. Dailybooth.com slash the creative one. Go to my profile here. And I gotta say, I'm really, really impressed at all the real estate we have. Look at all the information we can see. This was never possible on, on the iPhone. And if it was, we would have to zoom in like this. Practically showing that we're blind. But no, this is not the case. I can, I can read that text perfectly fine. Um, it might not appear that way on camera because my flip minnow can only get so close. But yeah. So as, as you can see, um, zooming and scrolling is extra smooth. Very, very, very responsive. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and of course, if you wanted to go to landscape mode, you could. And you can go back into tabs. Go to our other page. And if you wanted to close a page, you go into your tabs view. Simply touch the X. Or just touch new page. Just start a new page. And then you're on your way. Google.com. And it actually guesses what you were typing. Whoops, I touched the wrong one, but googlemaps.com. And if you want to go to uh, Google, there it is. If I touch or type in the creative one, my name should appear. Yep, there it is. Zoom in for the video, the creative one. And it's going to search. Very cool stuff. Um, and, um, Rendering is very fast. I, I don't know if I mentioned that already. But what's even cooler is since YouTube supports, I mean, since the iPad fully supports YouTube videos, you no longer have to exit the Safari web browser to just view a video like you do on the iPhone or iPod Touch. Now what's really cool is, check this out, the video plays right within a web page just like it would on the desktop. You simply touch play, it takes a second to buffer, and this is my good friend Kyle's um, unboxing. Check him out. YouTube.com slash KWA22122. And then, of course, you have the option of going full screen. And you can zoom out. Pause that. Really, really cool stuff. I'm really impressed. And what else? We have bookmarks up here. Again, a cool drop down menu. It's kind of floating over everything. It's a cool interface. You can touch Facebook. Now I'm already logged in. And then here is the Facebook page. And again, since you have so much more screen real estate than the iPhone, this is basically a Facebook app on its own. You can see so much more information, which is nice. What else did I want to show you guys? Oh yeah, also you can add bookmarks. Just click the add, add bookmark, add the home screen or mail link to this page. So if I touched mail link, I can mail this to whoever. By the way, facebook.com slash David DeFranco if you're interested in adding me. And of course you can pinch and zoom ultra, ultra fast. Actually, let me add just the home screen real quick. You can 
whoops, I didn't mean to do that. You can touch add the home screen. Uh, I can call it Facebook, add that, it'll take me there, and there it is. So now if I touch that, it'll automatically go to my Facebook page. Really cool stuff. Also, side note, this works exactly the same way as the iPhone and iPod Touch. If you hold if you hold down an icon for a few seconds like this, all of them will kind of get jiggle and impatient. You simply touch the red, delete, home button, and you're done. So going back into Safari, I think that pretty much covers it. Rendering is super fast. You can play videos within YouTube now. I mean, w w within the web page now. And overall, it's really nice. Actually, let me show you a, a uh, content-rich page to show you how fast it loads. Let's go to the Apple Store. There's tons of graphics on there. Oh, also, I should say, this thing loads so much faster than my iPhone does, which is pretty much to be expected. And as you can see, it's instant uh, because the processor is, what, 1 gigahertz, I believe? Something like that. Something really fast for um, something this size. And, of course, you just touch... and you can see everything almost instantly. Really cool stuff. Okay, so that was Safari. Now let's go into Mail. And because of the large screen, we can see so much more in landscape mode. We have our messages by default on the left. We can simply touch a message, and it appears right there. We can zoom if we wanted to. We can edit. We can delete multiple at the same time, which does a cool effect. It kind of like stacks them like photos. I don't know if you can pick that up. You can kind of see the edges right there. Simply touch delete, wherever you wanted to, touch edit again. We can move these into trash or my spam folders or any of that good stuff. And of course, this does support multiple uh, email clients, but I'm just on my primary Gmail right now. And if I want to delete a message, the trash can up here deletes it instantly. This you can move. Actually, that's a quicker way to move your messages. Um, if you just want to do one message at a time, you can reply or forward right there. Reply, a little message window pops up. Cancel that. And, and of course, if you want to write a new email, very simply, top right icon, type away. Let's get in there. There we go. Don't save. Now, if we rotate to portrait view, it's a little different. Um, in portrait view, you can only see your message right there. But... The coolness doesn't stop just, just because you switched to portrait view. If you touch the inbox icon on the top left, just like in the other apps, you kind of have that floating window thing. You simply touch, there's a Twitter email, and you're on your way in no time. And of course, if you want to swipe through your messages real quick, you have arrows up here to go through them pretty fast. Okay, so that was mail. Pretty simple, but pretty functional. Next up is App Store, and if you're using the App Store on an iPad, you are seeing an exclusive view that iPhone and iPod Touch view, uh, users cannot see. So upon launching the App Store, everything loads in pretty quickly, and you're seeing iPad-only apps, which is good. I like keeping them separate. iPad apps over here, and you know iPhone apps, and wherever else. So these are iPad apps only, but you can download and install iPhone and iPod Touch apps within this. But basically, on the front page, it's all about the iPad. So up here, we have that cool cover flow feature going here. Um, you can download iBooks, the um, official e um, the official e reader, excuse me, app from Apple, which interestingly enough is not included on the iPad. I really don't understand that. But anyway, it's it's free to download, and I already have it installed, and I'll be covering that next. So this is the featured page, the front page. You have a what's hot category to see what most uh, users are downloading. Magic Piano is one I downloaded, and I'll probably cover that in a future video. Pretty cool app. Down here we have Top Charts. Top Paid Apps are on the left, and Top Free Apps are on the right. You can scroll on both at the same time. And if you want to enter one, you simply touch it. USA Today, another great app. Um, maybe I'll do a video on that soon. And yes, that is free. Really, really good app, especially for being free. Categories. To keep everything organized, Apple has categories for pretty much anything. So if you want to do photography, which really impresses me, or interests me rather, you're presented with the same view of the, as a featured page, but based on that category only, which is nice. 
So here are a bunch of uh, photography apps. And uh, if we click on my album down here, I do not know what this app is, just randomly. I guess it's a nice, clean way of looking at your photos all in one shot. So it's pretty nice. Actually, let me go back to Top Charts to show you installing an app. So here's Netflix. Yes, Netflix is on the iPad, which in my opinion is a killer app. I have not used it because I'm not signed up for Netflix. But if you're a Netflix subscriber, I'm pretty sure you will fall in love with this app because you can stream your movies straight to the iPad, which is amazing. So you simply touch free, install app. Now it's going to ask me for my password, so I'm going to pull it off screen for a second. Type in my password. Automatically drops it onto the home screen for you, and it installs literally in less, less than a minute. Almost there. And we are done. That was literally like 10 seconds. So I'll launch Netflix. Now again, I'm not a Netflix user at this moment, so I can't really demonstrate this. But I'm just showing you guys how easy it is to really use the Netflix app. And since I really don't need that, again, hold it for a few seconds, touch the X, delete, and I'll rate it five stars because I've heard good things. Right? And you're done. This is easily one of the most valuable apps on the iPad. I guess that's the best way of putting this. The iBooks is a huge selling point. Um, I will admit real quick that I'm not a big reader myself. I consider myself lazy when it comes to reading books. But this app alone could change that for me. Introducing iBooks. Sorry, the screen just got really bright. But um, upon launching, you were introduced to your iBooks bookshelf. Now, these are a bunch of samples I downloaded. Now, let me say that is a cool feature. When you download a sample for the iPad, you actually get a chapter or two, like entire chapters. It's not, it's not some cheap sample like one or two pages you actually get to read entire chapters in samples. So here's a book I downloaded, uh, Crush It by Gary uh, Vaynerchuk. I actually own the hard copy version. Actually, let's turn the brightness down for this video's purpose. That's a little too dim. There you go. And there is the sample of Gary's uh, Crush It book in Portrait View. Now, of course, if you're reading a book, you're usually seeing two pages at once. So let's rotate this, and this is where the coolness starts happening. Now you can turn pages simply by flicking, and yes, in ultra slow motion, so uh, as, as always, Apple did a great job with the animation. Look at that. That just looks real. Really, really nice stuff, guys. Really nice stuff. But of course, if you don't feel like flicking every time, you don't have to. You can simply touch it. And as shown about a minute ago, you can change brightness. Uh, brightness all the way up, pretty much blowing out my flip right now. Or if you're in a really, really dark room like we are now, you could turn it way down. That way your eyes aren't strained. But let's put it about halfway for this video's purposes. You can change the text size by touching the A. You can make it bigger. A little laggy in changing the text size, but nothing I'm going to complain about. So if you're pretty much blind, you can make the words huge. Um, I'm a big fan of small text. And you can change your fonts, which is nice. Baskerville, um, Times New Roman, and Verdana are my favorites on here. But let's go with Times New Roman because that's a good uh, font to see in a book. And then you can search. Let's just search Gary. His name is definitely in here since it's his book. And kind of like a spotlight search, it'll show all of the uh, places where Gary's name shows up. So if we touch this, it takes us to page 13. And it highlights it for us right there. Now, going up here to the left corner, we have library, which takes us back to our book uh, collection. Going back in there real quick to show you stuff, uh, other stuff. Um, here is, I believe, table of contents. And, of course, if you want to buy it, you can touch buy in the top left. But I don't know if I want to click installing on, so I don't want to. Um, accidentally buy since I already own the paperback version. And of course, if you want to go back to the page we were just on, simply touch resume up there. Actually, let me go back there. It's a really nice little bookmark icon. It actually looks like it's on the book. So I touch, touch resume and it goes back instantly. Now going back to library, you can do a list view if, you, if you're not into the whole bookshelf view. And you can sort by bookshelf, 
titles, authors, and categories. Let's go back to this, this view because I, I think it looks pretty awesome. And if you click edit, you can simply delete a book. Let's delete that one. I really don't need it. And then you can also move these books around if you wanted to, just, just like on the home screen. Click done. Touch done, rather. Keep saying to click. And you gotta, gotta slow down. And then the coolness even gets even better, to put simply. If you touch store, the store is hidden behind the bookshelf. I know, amazing. Ooh. Anyway, trying to be fun here. It looks exactly like the App Store or iTunes Store, but for books, basically. You can view uh, by categories. Since I'm into arts, let's touch arts and entertainment. And you're presented with tons of books around arts and, er and entertainment. Um, I'm not really sure how many books there are. There could be more because, for instance, if I search books on... Let's just type Apple Mac to get two keywords in there. There's not really many books based around Apple. Say, for instance, your search had no results. But, for this video's purposes, if I type in, and as you can see, typing is very easy, uh, Steve Jobs, there is just two books on him, which I actually have already, a sample anyway, and that's options. Actually, let's get out of that real quick. Since I don't have this one yet, you simply touch a book, a little preview window pops up, Price right there, $15, and if I want to get the sample, simply touch Get Sample, drops it in there, and it literally downloaded within like three seconds. Very fast stuff. And I'm reading in no time. It's a really nice app. So let's go back into the store, and I'll show you guys around a little more, and then I'll end this video. Cancel the search. Now down here, well, actually, first of all, the front page is a featured page. Down here, we can select New York Times bestsellers. Shows you fiction on left, non-fiction on right. And down here, I can enter my account information, redeem a promo code if I have one, or an iTunes gift card, and support, which actually takes you to their website. So let's get out of that. Let's get back to iBooks. Back into store. And back to New York Times. There we go. Now, if we go to the top charts... Basically, it is the same exact thing as the iTunes store, but for books, it shows you top paid books on the left and top free books on the right. So, the current top paid book is Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, and the top free book right now is, is um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And, yeah, pretty cool stuff. And just like in the other stores, as mentioned, purchases shows you everything um, that you purchased. Now, I... Now, I have technically not purchased anything. I've downloaded samples, but I've not purchased anything, so that's why they're not showing up. That is the iBooks app. That pretty much covers everything I want to talk about in terms of my iPad review. Um, I realize I did not cover contacts. That's because as soon as I open it, it's going to show people's information no matter what, and that's really I, that's something I don't want to do uh, for people's privacy. And I did not show off settings, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that in a separate video. And I do promise everyone I will do videos on plenty of um, other third-party apps or first-party, such as Pages, Apple's um, word processing app, which is awesome. That's just a test thing I did. Um, pretty cool. You can just move stuff around if you wanted to. It's a really nice app. Anyway, that's it, guys. Expect many more videos as mentioned. Thanks for watching, and as always, check out the side, uh, the social links. Not in the sidebar anymore. Under the video, I gotta get used to saying that. And I will see you guys in my next video.